I'd like to start the explanation of the handout materials. Today's presentation focuses on how the water processing facility removes radioactive particles, which is part of the entire water processing system's function. As explained in last week's presentation, the accumulated water in the reactor building and turbine building is transferred to and processed in the centralized radiation waste treatment facility. After desalination, the treated water is reused to cool the reactor. Today I will explain how the radioactive materials are removed in the system, which has been circled with a red bold line in the handouts. Such a role is served by two facilities, namely the cesium absorption apparatus and decontamination instruments. First, Curion's cesium absorption apparatus. We have installed four series of the system and currently two series are under operation. The total process capacity is 50 cubic meters per hour and each series can process between from around 10 to 20 cubic meters per hour. The total capacity of 50 cubic meters per hour is equivalent to 1,200 tons per day. Taking a look at each series, the first portion of the cesium absorption tower is called the SMZ skid, which contains a float stone and removes oil and impurities such as technetium. The next portion with the four vessels is called the H skid, which absorbs cesium. The last is the AGH skid, which removes the iodine. For reference, as more than seven months have already passed, most of the iodine has already decayed, and currently iodine in the processed water has not been detected or is below the detection limit. Next is SARI, the second cesium absorption apparatus. It is also composed of vessels and absorbs cesium. It has two series with each having a 25 cubic meter per hour capacity, which in total are equivalent to the capacity of Curion system. Being the same as Curion system, SARI has two vessels in line which removes oil and impurities. Next, four vessels out of five absorb cesium. Lastly, the media filter. A small filter processes the water in order to prevent absorbent leakage. Different from Curion, SARI has less dynamic parts namely pumps. Hence, at the moment, we feel that SARI is superior to Curion in terms of operational reliability. Regarding the mechanism of the absorption apparatus, the adsorption tower called the vessel contains zeolite. As the picture and chemical formula are shown in the material, zeolite is something like a floating stone and has a structure which allows for the passage of water. Its basic structure is such that a portion of the silicon ion from the oxidized ion is replaced with the aluminum ion. As the silicon ion is a quadrivalent atom and the aluminum ion is a triad atom, the replaced structure lacks one electron. This is compensated with a metal ion such as a sodium ion or a cesium ion so that the structure maintains electrical neutralization which results in the absorption of cesium. This absorption mechanism has a track record in the Three Mile Island incident in the U.S. and our system is an improved version. This absorption vessel contains zeolite inside which absorbs cesium so that the apparatus itself is radioactive waste. Accordingly, the apparatus has to be properly stored while its surface radiation level is under close surveillance. We plan to store the apparatus, which itself is the shielded iron container with a 178 millimeter thickness in the square-shaped concrete-made box called Box Culvert. The construction of such storage places is currently in progress and apparatus has been stored there as the construction is completed. Regarding the inside of the apparatus, water is removed prior to storage as water may produce hydrogen and oxygen due to radiation decomposition. Another facility is the decontamination instruments. It utilizes a different principle from Curion or Seri which removes radioactive materials using zeolite. It uses chemicals to coagulate radioactive materials dissolved in water. Page six describes the entire system. While the material describes the system with two layers, each layer essentially has the same function. 
First, the water processed by Curion's cesium absorption apparatus goes through an oil removal process. Afterwards, the chemicals are injected into the water in the primary reaction vessels. The chemical reaction between the chemicals and cesium is enhanced in the high-speed coagulation settling facility, multi-flow, and the resulting product is stored in the settling vessel shown on the right. The chemicals are added again to the clear supernatant water for further coagulation. After those treatments, the treated water is transferred to the SPTB tank shown on the right. The red line indicates the exhaust system using a fan in order to prevent a high concentration of hydrogen and oxygen inside the tanks, which may be produced due to radiation decomposition in the liquid treatment. Please refer to the next page for the detailed mechanism of this system. While we are not allowed to disclose detailed information regarding the chemicals, the coagulation settling method utilized Areva and Veolia's water treatment technology, know-how, and chemicals. As shown in the picture below, Areva's system feature is that the chemical injection incurs a chemical reaction for the coagulation of cesium and that the microsand with adhesive polymer enhances high speed and less time consuming coagulation. As shown in the picture on the left, we have conducted a comparison analysis among the inorganic flocculent organic flocculant and silicate flocculant and applied the best formula in the operation after checking its effect on the test operation. As a result of the treatment, Areva's decontamination instruments produce waste sludge containing 100 times the concentration of radioactive materials as the pre-treated water does. Such radioactive waste, which is in the form of slime, is stored in the pellet storage tank in the process main building. It is stored in the container with the 1 meter thick concrete wall. 580 cubic meters is currently filled with these wastes. As the amount of waste sludge is expected to increase, additional storages with a 25 millimeter thick iron tank is under installation in the outside underground for future storage. We plan to secure proper storage by putting highly concentrated water and sludge underground. Here I'd like to go over the track record of the installation of the water treatment system. After the earthquake on March 11th, a large amount of seawater flooded the turbine buildings and reactor buildings. Afterwards, on March 24th, three workers laying cables inside the contaminated water in the basement and first floor of the Unit 3 turbine building were exposed to more than 170 millisieverts. This incident revealed that there was extremely highly contaminated water inside the facilities that urged the necessity for countermeasure planning. In early April, Areva proposed the use of decontamination instruments and Curion's proposal was received in the middle of April. In early May, Toshiba also made a proposal. These proposals serve to maintain the diversity of the systems and we have decided to install Curion and Toshiba's cesium absorption apparatus and Areva's decontamination instruments. On April 30th, we made a final decision regarding the water treatment system, including water desalination and the construction has been in progress. We started trial operations from June 14th and started official operations from June 17th. On the other hand, regarding Toshiba's SARI, as it took a little time for designing and manufacturing, the installation work started from July 26th and trial operations started from August 16th with official operations starting from August 18th. While we started operation of the water treatment system from mid-June, a variety of troubles has occurred. The major troubles are listed in the handouts. In Curion, there was leaking at the connection of the piping and the rupture disc. In Areva, the whole water treatment system was shut down due to the signal of intermittent operations. Also, chemical leakage at the chemical injecting line happened several times. We now believe that we have overcome these troubles and have achieved stable operations. It was achieved over half a year after we recognized the necessity of the water treatment facility after the earthquake in March. Next, I will address the track record of the water treatment. First, we expect that the system is capable of reducing the dose value of high-level radioactive water from 10 to the 6th power becquerels per cubic meter to 10 to the 0th 
power becquerels per cubic meter or 10 to the first power becquerels per cubic meter. Expressing the decontamination in factors, this is equivalent to 1 500 thousandth to 1 1 millionth. We think the record of the decontamination system is better than expected as shown in the graph. The left side shows the two cases using both the first cesium absorption apparatus and the decontamination instrument and the individual operation of the cesium adsorption apparatus. The right side shows the second cesium adsorption apparatus. Regarding the water processing, the rated daily processing volume is 1200 cubic meters, which is equivalent to 50 cubic meters per hour. From the operations, we know that the system is capable of processing 1,692 cubic meters a day, which is equivalent to 71 cubic meters per hour. While we had 120,000 cubic meters of contaminated water in late June, it has currently been reduced to 94,000 cubic meters in total, which consists of 77,000 cubic meters and 17,000 cubic meters in the centralized radioactive waste treatment facility. From here on out, in order to prevent the potential leakage of underground water into the building, we plan to utilize the water treatment facility in such a way as to keep the water level of the turbine building at OP3 meters. The next slide also de deals with the water processing record. The graph shows the daily processed volume and the total volume. You can see that the water processing has been in operation at almost full capacity since late August. As a result, we have been able to achieve the targeted water level of OP3 meters. 140,000 cubic meters of highly concentrated contaminated water has been processed in total. In addition, the processed water is stored inside the power station and reused as the water to be injected into the reactor. Regarding the current status of water processing and future policy, we recognize that we have achieved stable operations of the water treatment system and successfully maintained the water level at OP3 meters. Therefore, we believe that we will be able to continue with stable reactor cooling and that we succeeded in greatly reducing the risk of discharging highly concentrated contaminated water into the environment compared to the situation in May. As shown in the graph on the bottom of page 16, the water level of each building has been within the expected and planned range. Regarding the countermeasures and future plans, we recognize that there are potential issues of corrosion and hydrogen gas. To minimize the risk of radioactive particle leakage, we need to prevent corrosion by further improving the system. We plan to continuously use Curion Sari and Arriva's system in the future as we aim to establish a full-scale water treatment facility as a mid-term target. Therefore, we will maintain and manage the system by properly conducting repair work. In addition, as hydrogen gas generated by radioactivity increases the risk of explosion, we will continue to pay sufficient attention to hydrogen gas. Finally, although we have reduced the dose level of treated water to 10 to the zeroth power becquerels per cubic centimeters, we are considering a new treatment system to achieve further reduction.